A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John, John chapter 11, verses 35 to 44. And Jesus went, so the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them could not say, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now he will be a, there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Razarus, come out. The dead man came out tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him, let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. So guys, I have to get not more because we are sinners. Yes, we are sinners. But God is a merciful God. And the passage I have Today, today, very many people will take it during burial, which is okay and it is appropriate. But I want to start with what we have been seeing today in the movie, Coach Carter. And I want to say this, and this is what I'll open with so that we go back to what these guys, the Jews, are saying. Just because you deserve it, the world will not just give it to you. Just because you deserve it, the world will not just give it to you. You must work for it. We must struggle if we should. <coughs> they call you boys. No, you are boys. Boys will. But you can choose to be men. You see, rather this, actually, these guys were asking, is this man who, who opened the eyes of the blind man, would he have not healed this man and prevented his death? Therefore, it means Razarus would have been healed. But what caused Razarus not to be healed? Remember, Jesus goes to the house of Razarus. And when he is in there, he was the man. And when he is in there, the sisters are the ones who receive Jesus Christ. That means Razarus was not there. Where was he when Jesus was visiting him? He deserved to be healed. But where was he? Was he anywhere to be healed? We are all sinners. And we deserve to be for forgiven by God. But where are you for, forgive for forgiveness? Lazarus was there, actually maybe Jesus even went to this house because he knew Lazarus was sick. But Lazarus chose other things other things than to be healed. Sometimes we also choose other things than to be healed. When we come for confession, when we come for potential right, we come for, for treatment. We come to be healed. We come to amend our past. When we do not confess our sin, when did Jesus come to the world? Jesus came that we should not perish. For God 
one son and the boy that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not <laughs> but have life and have it eternally. The same with us. Sometimes we are dead and to sin. Because of the sin of Adam, we became sinners and we could no longer see God as they used to do in the Garden of Eden. We were shrouded. That's why Lazarus in his tomb, he, is, he has some tatters all over his body. We are tied. And that's why John will say, when that time comes, we will see God as he is. Not as in a mirror, but as he is. When we attain that beatific vision, we will see God as we used to see him in the Garden of Eden. But in so far as you are in sin, we are dead. In so far as we don't come to God and confess, we are dead. We are like Lazarus. But when God is brought to us, even by our friends, and we ourselves accept to hear the voice of God, then we are saved and we come back to life. Lazarus was dead, but Martha and Mary and the villagers brought Jesus to the tomb. And when he came to the tomb, he called Lazarus, come out. And as he says, I know my sheep. He says, I know my sheep, and my, my sheep know me. And they know my voice, and I know theirs. So Lazarus was a friend of Jesus. So when he heard the voice, he recognized the voice. You see, I was talking with the dog hunter, and he told me about Max, that big dog, Mr. Dog. <laughs> so he tells me, when he goes out and comes back in different clothes, Max will not recognize him immediately. Until he calls him Max, Max, Max. Consecutive haraka, haraka, so that Max will recognize him. And when he recognizes his voice, he cannot attack him. Do we recognize the voice of Jesus Christ when we are in there in death? In the same breath, we have a sister, and I go back to what we are watching today, we really coach Kata. And Kata tells these guys, and I, I want to look into your eyes and tell you this. I see, when I look at you, I see a system that is designed for you to fail. If you look at our place, if you look at this place, only 50% or less in this county probably maybe 50% or less get to school. Right? Those that graduate from form 4 only 6% or less again go to college. that when I walk in this town and look around maybe a handful will go to college and if and if they do not go to college where do they go if they do not go to college where do they go jail or they will end up dead. <clears throat> Look at the guy on your right and the guy on your left. One of you is designed to fail. One of you is designed to what? To fail. And 
When you fail, when you fail, they will use you and then they will abuse you. That's why you will become puppets of warmongers. We become puppets of politicians. We become puppets of people who do not care about us. Today, as we today, as we conclude the, this day of recollection, sit down and look at your lives. Look at your parents' life and ask yourself, do I want to be better? Look at how you live and ask yourself by the end of the day, do I want to be better? If the answer is yes, learn to know God. Learn to know Jesus Christ. Because God is the beginning of is the beginning of what? God is the beginning of wisdom. And he is also the author of everything that is. I promise you, if we live for God, if we put God first, in today's world, people are sidelining God. Are you living a reality? 